Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Wanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. I'm Matt Halinski, taking another trip down memory lane, this one being in Tonawanda, the early 1960s to the mid-1960s. Um, it was a lot of terrific Tonawanda football teams at that point and some uh, careful, uh, colorful characters and and, uh, and quite good ball players. One of those ball players it was Larry Majerus. And, and Larry, welcome so much to, to joining me today. Thank you. For those of you not familiar with you, and I'm su I'm surprised there aren't many that aren't familiar with you. Walk us down your you growing up in Tonawanda in the late 1950s, early 1960s. Well, we used to have a, a group of guys that were my brother's age. Uh, you probably heard of Ron Sheasley. Ruggie grew up in our uh, neighborhood, and they always played softball down in corner. Uh, and the only way you could bat was left-handed. So everybody had left-handed. And eventually I got to play with them, but we were always playing baseball. Uh, we were always playing some sport. Um, the guy who lived across the street from us, uh, his dad built a basketball court, a full-length basketball court. And uh, those guys used to go, the older fellows used to go play over there. And then when I needed somebody, they allowed me to play. And um, eventually, my brother went to college. He went to Buff State. Um, Joe Pendos, who I wound up teaching with at Tanawanda, was a ed teacher, Jumpin' Joe, uh, he used to come over to our house or visit my brother. I don't know why. And I'd be out in my side yard. We had a, an extra lot next to our house. And I'd be kicking a ball over the... Um, telephone wires and that's how I became a kicker and eventually uh, in 7th and 8th grade we used to go to the boys club all the time every just about every night instead of doing our homework and uh, that's where I got to play against Bob Lanier um, Bob Lanier I was in 8th grade he was in 7th grade and he couldn't walk and chew gum but he was like 6 foot 4 you know, and I'm five foot nine or something, five foot ten. You know, he just towered over me. But then I went on and uh, we played freshman football. We went four and one as freshman playing football. And uh, I don't remember what our record was playing basketball, but I know we were nine and one playing baseball. And baseball was our sport. We used to play football uh, before the season. That we go down to the junior high uh, as ninth graders, tenth graders, uh, uh, juniors, and even seniors would go down and we'd go down and play, and the cops would chase us off the field. We hop the fence and they'd leave, and so then we'd go back over the fence and keep playing. We always had a couple games going every night or every other night or whatever. And, uh, you know, it just went on. You know, all the guys. Baseball-wise, we used to play baseball all the time. We used to go to the junior high field where the varsity used to play. The field's no longer there, but uh, we used to have a game, and then after we get done doing that, we'd go over to Colvin Pool and go swimming and go home and go play our games that night. And, uh, you know, Rick and – well, Billy Rook was always from Tonawanda, and Billy, before he had his medical problems, uh, was a heck of an athlete. And it was always Billy Root and Rick Costata. Rick came, I think, when he was in seventh or eighth grade. And, uh, you know, right there, they said he was going to be a senior. And he's probably the best athlete ever to come out of Tonawanda overall. He could do it all. You know, you, you saw him play football and uh, basketball and baseball, but nobody ever saw him play pool. Um, funny thing was when Rick got out of pro ball uh, we were playing golf and uh, there was about eight of us we were playing over at Beaver Island we were, I was following Rick uh, playing behind him and I got about the 16th hole and I got in the middle of the fairway and said you know, how come they keep finding these tees in the fairway what's going on here so when he got done I, I, I said to him I, you know, I said to these guys I said, I said somebody's leaving tees in the fairway why there's Rick said, oh, you're not supposed to tee up every shot? I said, no. <laughs> I said, you just tee up off the first one. So Rick was teeing up all his shots. 
and uh, he could snap, snap out, of, out of a golf ball, but he just never took it up. He didn't like golf, but uh, he could do it all. I saw him on a speed bag once after a baseball game. We went to a party at Donald Bryant's house. Don had a uh, was a former boxer had a speed bag in his uh, basement. I watched Rick hit that speed bag. And he, it's just going a mile a minute. It's just unbelievable how good an athlete he was. And, uh, you know, it was, he's just a great athlete. He was just the best to come out. He could do it all. Could swim. He was in my swimming class. <laughs> and uh, we had George Miller as our uh, phys ed teacher. And, if, you know, George was big into the boys club. And he loved athletes. And so, of course, he loved Rick and he loved myself and all, Tommy McKay and all these other guys, Johnny Roth, uh, Tommy Small, all these guys. And the guys, George wasn't big on guys who weren't athletes or who didn't do anything in gym class. So he'd always get us aside and say, hey, take care of this guy or take care of that guy, you know. And uh, when he, George played his gym classes and all that stuff. But uh, it was a great experience growing up in Tonawanda. We grew up in a good time. You also played with uh, Doc Rowley and also with uh, Larry Bodie at that point, too, didn't you, during that time period? Yes, I played with, <clears throat> excuse me, Rick. When Rick was, uh, I was a sophomore, Rick was a senior. And by far the best running back I've ever seen. You know, they just gave, and he could run like the wind. And But we had a good team. You know, so that makes it easy. Guys could block and, uh, you know, tackle and all that stuff. And Clint's philosophy with uh, practice was you never tackled during the week. You know, we would block and all, but you never tackled. And his philosophy was if you're going to tackle, you'll tackle on Saturday. And so, you know, you never, you never tackled any of the backs or anything like that. But Rick Raleigh was a heck of an athlete. Uh, he was a heck of a football player. Uh, I know he made all league as a baseball player too, I believe, but, uh, that wasn't his best sport. His best sport was, uh, football. He, he was a heck of a halfback. And at that time, there were a ton of good players all over. You know, I think of some, you know, North Tonawanda had a ton of running backs that played at that time. And, uh, when we played the TNT that, game that year we went into the school they always had us going to the school like noon one o'clock and they gave us a steak dinner and all this stuff and we watched game films when we went in that soft my sophomore year it was a it was beautiful and all of a sudden you know when we got to watching film and all that stuff Clint comes and said you know there's snow on the ground i don't know how there had to be six seven inches of snow and they said you can either play it today or if you want, we'll move it to Thanksgiving Day. We said, no, we want to play today. And um, we wound up losing 13 to 7. Uh, you know, I, I was hoping I'd get a chance to win the game, but, uh, you know, we, we couldn't pass. Our, of course, you know, we had Rick, so that was a big thing. But North Carolina wanted to hit three or four running backs. It just sounded like I heard a cattle that when they would run, you just – could feel the ground shake. They just ran so hard. They they were good. They were good running backs. So, what was the Niagara Frontier uh, League like during that time period? Oh, it was excellent. It, it was uh, one of the premier leagues. Uh, we were, I think, we were the smallest school. I think my graduating class had three hundred seventeen. That was the largest graduating class of Panama High School up until that point. We only had 317 kids. Uh, the school had uh, only three grades in it, the high school. It was a new high school, and we only had um, sophomores, juniors, and seniors there. The freshmen were down in the old junior high school at that time. And uh, Niagara Frontier League was excellent. Um, when I was a sophomore, they had uh, Trot High School, which was by far. They had... I think seven guys who were caught, coached by Matt by Mazza. And um, they had seven guys. One of them was the Frank Starks. 
whose uh, grandson went on to be an outstanding football player at UB. But uh, he, he was outstanding. There was anybody. They had one. Tom Nestero was the quarterback of that team. And then they had uh, four other guys. Just, you know, they, they went undefeated for two years. They won the sectionals and, and all that stuff. They were just outstanding. And, uh, you know, of course, eventually tried clothes, but uh, their basketball teams, their athletic teams were usually pretty good, especially baseball and um, basketball. Did it make any difference that you were playing big schools like Kenmore East and West and North Tonawanda or the small schools like Trot and maybe Lukeport? Or uh, Lackawanna was in the, in, the, in the league at that point as well, too, weren't they? Yes. Uh, no, it didn't. It, you know, at that time, um, you had athletes, you know, like all all my friends, we were, were all two and three sport athletes, you know, whatever we played, um, you know, like uh, Mike Wolf, who was an outstanding halfback when I played on my team, uh, he was a halfback, he was a swimmer, an outstanding swimmer and a baseball player. Uh, you know, uh, Alex Hope played football, and uh, was a wrestler. Uh, Jim Kehoe was a football player and a wrestler. You know, so uh, I remember coaching uh, Empire State games, and I was talking to uh, a coach from Long Island. And, well, actually, I met this guy when we were – I used to take the kids when I was coaching varsity baseball down to Florida. And actually, I met this guy in Florida. And he was talking, he, he coached Sachem High School, which had 6,400 kids. It was the largest public school in New York State. He said they had eight modified teams that filtered into four freshman teams that filtered into two JV teams that filtered into one varsity team. And he didn't like his team per se because he only had one kid. He must have had 18 kids on a team. He had one kid to play more than one uh, sport. It was all the other kids. All the other kids on a team played baseball. He goes, he had one kid who played, was a wrestler and a baseball player. And he didn't like that. He liked kids who were athletes that played all different sports. And, uh, you know, that's how it was at Tanawanda. You know, everybody played a, a second sport or third sport. You know, and that's how it was with many schools. Uh, they uh, guys played, you know, several sports, whatever they may be. You were part of the the quarterback room um, during the '60s. There, where you had Casada, Tommy Small, yourself, and and, and Tommy McKay, and, and you had quite the uh, the spectrum of personalities in the, uh, during that time period as well, too, with all these guys. You talked about Casada, but what about Tom Small and what about uh, Tommy McKay? Well, Tom Small was a good quarterback. I mean, uh, we both made second team all league. Uh, I don't know. One was made for the Courier and one was made for the Buffalo and all that stuff. And Tommy, we were good friends. You know, uh, in fact, when we were juniors, um, we had an outstanding team. We went undefeated. You know, we outscored teams 300-something to 50-something or whatever. I remember uh, the first game we played, we played Trot. And they had a uh, quarterback. His name was Kennedy. I, I think his first name might have been John, but I'm not sure. And um, he got thrown out of the game at halftime. I don't know what he did and all this stuff. But Clint said, no, you're not throwing him out of the game because – we wound up winning the game like 59 to 7 or something like that. But Clint wouldn't let that kid get through because he was by far their best player. But Clint said, no, you're not throwing him out of the game. He's going to play and all this stuff. Let him back in the game. And, uh, you know, we went on and Rick was Rick. And Rick is the most down-to-earth person you ever want to meet. You never know he did anything. Uh, you never know he played pro football or you know, he got a baseball contract or, you know, he owned a restaurant or whatever. You know, he never bragged. He he was always one of the guys. Uh, we used to go up to 
uh, the Queen's Plate in Toronto, uh, myself and some guys that I played with, uh, softball with and all that stuff. And Rick would meet us up in Toronto, and he'd be in a bar. We'd go into a bar, and he's playing pool. With, I don't know who that guy was and all this stuff, but he introduced us to his friends up there. And they weren't, you know, athletes or anything like this. They were just regular guys like, like us. And, um, you know, Rick would always meet us. After you get done playing pool, he'd have his farmer jeans on with no T-shirt on, of course, it's, you know, June, the end of June, so you could dress like that. But uh, that's, he was just down to earth, you know, and uh, Tommy McKay and I, uh, Tom was a quarterback after uh, myself because Rick played his junior and senior year, and then uh, Tommy Small and I played our senior year, which was uh, Rick's freshman year in college, and then McKay played very little quarterback at all until he became a senior and uh i went to college with Tom for almost a semester and um the baseball coach he went down there we went down there to play baseball and the baseball coach just loved Tom. he just uh we were in the naia division uh and we were a very high rated school we were rated like two or three at the time and all that stuff what school was that larry it was Pfeiffer College at the time. It's Pfeiffer University now. Okay. But it was down in Meisenheimer, North Carolina, uh, which is like uh, going through Pendleton, except it's only about a quarter of the size. <laughs> you can imagine that. It had a post office, it had a gas station, and might have had a little store. That was it. That was all it the town had and the nearest town to us was Albemarle which was 12 miles away and then uh, Salisbury was up the road which was 20 miles away and uh, you know we went down there to play baseball like they said but, and the baseball coach just loved town we had um, eight left-handed hitters that's who we started and Tom Tom started at shortstop and then uh, when we were coming home for Thanksgiving, Tom just never went back. He would have had a scholarship and all that stuff. He would have stayed, but school just wasn't for Tom. That's all there was to it. So uh, he got home and went to work at Chevy and got drafted. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you know Bill Pommentier, but Papa played – with us play football and basketball and baseball and all that stuff. But his claim to fame was that uh, McKay threw him a pass one time and stuck in his face mask. So, <laughs> you know, that's his, uh, his claim to fame. Talk, talk about playing uh, football for Clint Small versus playing baseball for Clint Small, because you had both. Oh, well, Clint Small was uh, a people person. You know, he was interested in the kids. You know, when I transferred from Portland to Pfeiffer, I called Clint. And Clint, you know, I talked to him, and he's the guy who got me into Pfeiffer. I said, Clint, I want to transfer to school. I, I just don't like playing football at Portland. I don't like the coach and all this stuff. He goes, well, he goes, I've gone down south with Tom, and the school that I like down there was Pfeiffer. And uh, he got me into Pfeiffer. He called and all this stuff. He did all the work that got me into Pfeiffer. He was just, you know, uh, Clint wasn't a guy who liked to run up the score. If he ran up the score, it's because the subs, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're playing. They're the ones who scored. It wasn't a case of he was one of these guys who left his first team in there and he said, okay, you know, get 100 points. And once you get that, we'll put in the scrubs. We'd be, we could be up 14 to nothing and, and, and you know, Clint would say, okay, this guy going, this guy's going and all this stuff. He wasn't a coach that tried to run up the score. And when uh, we were seniors, they picked us for last uh, to come in last because we had lost everybody, supposedly lost everybody. We lost Rick, we lost 
Larry Bowie, you know, all the seniors. But we beat everybody so bad, we had 22 lettermen coming back. We had two starters, Bob Gross and uh, Bob Beach. And they were our two co-captains. But uh, they were the only two lettermen coming back. Or the only two starters coming back. Bob started a cornerback and uh, Bob started a guard. Uh, and they picked us for last. We played Lackawanna, who was picked for first. And they had a, you know, a huge offensive line. Uh, I mean, they probably averaged at that time 230 pounds. And we beat them 30, or 13 to nothing. Um, but I remember that game. I remember I was playing defense back and at the scoreboard and at the town, at the old town high school field. Uh, I remember watching and this, Offensive guy, offensive lineman, must have been, oh, probably right tackle. All of a sudden, he just stood up. They were in, ready to snap the ball, and he just stood up. And he started looking around, and the guy had an epileptic fit right there. <laughs> and we had to stop the game and take him off and all that stuff, which they, sh- you know, should have, but they did it. But, uh, and then we just went on, and actually, we clinched the league after the fifth game, which is unheard of, because we only played eight games at that time. <laughs> Excuse me. And then um, after the fifth game, we were 5-0, and oh, and uh, other teams, they could have tied us, but they couldn't beat us, you know, in standing. So after the fifth game, we won, we've won the league already. Uh, and, you know, we just went on. I got to ask and, you. I got to ask you a Clint, a baseball story with Clint Small. When you played it in the early '60s for Clint, did he used to take? And he was coaching third base. Did he have, always take a mid out to uh, the third base coach's uh-huh. box and move it around? Third baseman left. I was going to tell you that third baseman left. He took a little third baseman and leave his club and coaching back. From there, where he was in relation to that club, that's how he did his signals. And, and nobody picked up on that for decades, or nobody knew for decades. It was quite the secret amongst the Tonawanda baseball players that never got out. Yeah, they never, uh, I guess nobody ever caught on to it. When, when I played, they, they made him take the glove out. Uh, but, yeah, I remember going to watch games, and him, uh, the third baseman throwing a glove over there, you know, and uh, he would kick it or, you know, stand either behind it or, in front of it or whatever, he, whatever he wants you to do. And, you know, you know the signal, so, you know, where he positioned himself and all that stuff or what he did with the club, that's what you know what you're going to do. Let me ask you about Let me ask you about the TNT games. They're quite the rivalry. Um, I don't know, you know, some some guys from the NT side during that time period said they didn't like the Tonawanda guys. And it, it's uh, – it was a lot of school pride and, and maybe a little bit of hostility as well, too, at that point. Was was that the same feeling that you had with the Tonawanda crew? Um, I know a couple of guys from North Tonawanda, but uh, maybe I, you know, we never talked about it or anything. Uh, you know, it was, it was a rivalry. Um, that, that's how it was. You know, uh, I really never knew the guys from NT or guys who played for NT until later, you know, uh, there was a lot of, in baseball, there was a lot of rivalry. I remember guys getting in fights and, and whatnot, uh, playing um, News League, you know, because back then right. you had two teams from Tonawanda, North Tonawanda, and the town of Tonawanda, and they were all good teams. They all had good players and all this stuff, uh, you know, and, there was guys who didn't get along and all the stuff who wound up playing with each other later on in life, you know, playing uh, baseball or uh, softball together. So, you know, it was just, just a rivalry. It's just like any other one and all the stuff. You know, it wasn't a case of, you know, I was calling into bat from North Carolina because I didn't really know anybody until later on when I started playing you know, loosely and uh, beyond. You became you became an educator um, 
and worked in, in Tonawanda and in another school district as well, too. What did you take from uh, maybe from Clint Small or, or your education growing up in Tonawanda and applying it towards your career? Well, Clint was, like I said, was just a nice guy. You know, uh, he wanted to win and all that stuff, but uh, he wasn't afraid to help kids from other schools, you know, other athletes, even though they were, uh, I can think of one guy in particular who said who really, really helped him. And uh, he became a good, well, he was a good athlete in North Carolina. He was a little older than I was. But talking to him, he said, yeah, Clint really helped him and all that stuff. And he, and he made him a better player by, the guy did something during a game and, and Clint said, hey, son, you shouldn't do that, da 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 And the guy listened to him and, you know, he said, Clint really helped him, you know. Um, that was the kind of person Clint was. You know, like I said, that guy uh, from Trotty, you know, you're not throwing him out because, you know, we're, we're beating him at halftime as it was. You know, what's the game going to be like? You know, he said, no, you're not throwing him out. I remember one time, uh, this is when we were seniors. Of course, I was a catcher. Uh, John Keller was the first baseman, and Mike Wolf was the second baseman. And I don't know if it was Keller or Wolf screwed, screwed up, but Clint called timeout, walked out to the first place line, called me, called Keller, and called Wolf over and started talking to us. And he started quietly yelling at us all stuff. And I asked him, I said, Mr. Small, why did you, why did you call me? And, you know, because whoever screwed up, let's say it was Mike Wolf, he called John and I in here. I said, why did you call John and I in here? Mike's one of them screwed up. He goes, because I didn't want to embarrass him. Well, you know, I'm standing there with my, you know, like, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, he was yelling at Mike, but he didn't want to embarrass Mike, so he, all John and I and there three of us, four of us had the conversation. But that's what the kind of guy he was. He just, uh, you know, he was always helping people and all, and all that stuff. And um, Tom kind of turned out the same way. Tom and I were friends. Uh, and uh, he, excuse me, went to Williams, wound up going to Williams, which was an, an outstanding academic school. And, um, that's how I found out about Pfeiffer was because uh, Tom would go down south. They would take the Williams baseball team down south. Tom pitched for them for four years. And, uh, you know, they'd go to all these different schools and, and play during their spring break. And um, when Tom, when I was at Pfeiffer, Tom came down to uh, Pfeiffer and they were playing. Tom pitched against Pfeiffer that day that they were there. And uh, we wound up beating four to one. You know, you, know, you remember these things because you were friends and all that stuff. But uh, a funny thing, a funny story about Tab. Well, when we graduated, um, we were supposed to graduate in 1960, uh, 1969 from college. Well, I need, when I transferred, I need one credit to graduate. So I had to go back to fight for, for one semester to take one class. I don't know if they four classes, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I had a private room. So in that room, I had two desks, two beds, and all that stuff. I sit at my desk one day, minding my own business as I always did, doing my homework, reading. And all of a sudden, there's a knock on my door. I wonder, who the heck is this? So I go to the door. It's Tom. He said, hey, can I stay here for a couple of days? I'm going to Florida State to do my graduate work and all this stuff. And uh, you know, I'm just on my way to Florida. I said, sure, no problem. So he comes in, he stays for a couple of days, and he takes off and goes to Florida State. About three days later, again, I'm sitting at my desk, minding my own business, knock on the door. And I said, I go, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be in Florida State. It was Tommy Small again. He goes, I quit. <laughs> he goes, but but I can't go home because my dad will kill me. So <laughs> mind if I stay with you for a couple of days? I said, no. But uh, yeah, I was there for about three days and quit. And um, he wound up being, coming out, being a social worker. He's working up on uh, 
bust a habit or someplace up there on the west side of Buffalo. And uh, actually, we went out. Uh, i got a bunch of stories I can tell you. But uh, we went out one night, and there was Mary Grunwell, Tom, myself. I can't remember. There were three or four. It was maybe John or up and grew up in Coles, Buffalo. And uh, there was a girl walking, girls walking around and all that stuff. And Smalley says to me, he says, you know that one over there? I said, yeah. He said, who is it? And I told him who it was. He goes, how well you know? I said, well, I know who she is and all that stuff. It was introduced me. Well, that was the end of it. They wound up getting married, you know. And, uh, you know, they were married for I don't know how many years. And uh, little Tom passed away, you know. Let me ask. Let me ask you. Would you do anything different with your high school career? No, no, I wouldn't do a, a thing. Uh, had a great career, you know. Like I've told you, that the next eight years, when you start as a freshman, are going to be the best eight years of your life. Four years you spent in high school, four years you spent in college. You're never going to have a better time in your life because that's it. You're young. You know, you can do things. Uh, no, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, like I said, Tatawanda was the smallest school in the NFL. And uh, my senior year, I know we won four championships. We won football, um, baseball, swimming, had outstanding swimmers uh, at that time. You know, I remember going as a freshman and watching these guys swim. Every time they jumped in the pool, they set a state record. I mean, they don't stand now, but, uh, you know, they're some of the first teams like to break two minutes in the 200 free or whatever it was. Uh, they had 10 All-Americans on, on one high school team, uh, which is not easy to do. And they're up on the Wall of Fame at Um, uh, You know, they just had outstanding uh, swimming teams. But we won four championships. Oh, soccer. 1964 was the first year that Tonawanda had stock. They won the championship. They, they beat Kenmore West, who was supposed to be the premier school and all that stuff. Well, they weren't. Um, Tonawanda won 64 and 65. Won both years. Uh, won the soccer championship. You were inducted into the Tonawanda Wall of Fame in 2021. What does that mean to you being inducted? I'm up there with a lot of guys I played with. Um, I saw play, uh, play for me. You know, um, there's a lot of work put in there. Um, you know, I think the reason why I saw it was the coach. I really, you know, I'm still friends with the first guy. I had my first basketball team. Um, Todd Amheister, Ray Hoover, Chris Kretz, uh, Bruce Hyde, Craig Worsley. Uh, Mark Pickard, all these guys. You know, I, I still see these guys. It's still, we still go out, you know, and some of them are retired now. They're 66, 67 years old. And, uh, you know, they still invite me to go places to, you know, we'll meet for breakfast, you know, and say, hey, call Mo and have them, you know, and all this stuff. And we go golfing. Um, like uh, yesterday, I, I drove to Pittsburgh with, uh, Ray Hoover, he's a guy who played with me. He was originally from North Tonawanda, but then moved to Tonawanda for certain circumstances. But uh, he uh, played for me as a freshman. And, you know, he's now become, from me being his mentor, to me being his friend. We're friends also. And I see these guys. And, uh, you know, they'll invite me to go golfing and all this stuff. It's, it's, it was totally different. You know, uh, I, I just I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed And then when I retired from Tonawanda, I did because uh, a friend of mine who was teaching, I found out he had cancer. And uh, he wasn't even retired one year when he passed. And I said, that's it. I'm, I'm done in Tonawanda. That's it. And so I retired from Tonawanda after 33 years. Well, 33 years of teaching, so he had another 13 of school on there, so I was there for 36 years, or 46 years, and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, 
I met a lot of good people, guys like people that I still in communication with uh, from 20 years ago when I retired. And then, you know, but then I said to my wife, I said, what am I going to do now that I'm retired? You know, I was only 56 years old at the time. And I saw this ad uh, Sunday paper for a job at Sacred Heart. Well, where I lived, I lived right around the corner from Sacred Heart. And I had driven by Sacred Heart uh, Academy many, many times, but I'd never been inside of it, you know. And, um, and I saw this job for a math teacher. So I, I, I talked to my wife. She said, well, apply. You know, what's the worst they can do is tell you no. I said, okay, fine. So I redid my resume, and I sent it in. And two days later, I got a phone call saying, can you come at this time for an interview? I said, sure. So before I went to the interview that day that I was supposed to go, they called me and said, could you come in sooner because the appointment before you canceled? We, so I said, sure. So I went in. I never thought I'd get the job, you know. And uh, about a week later, they called me. They hired me. Uh, I was surprised. And they started me right at half step from where I left off in Panawanda, stepwise, not funny wise, stepwise. And um, it was like dying and going to heaven. I mean, uh, I had a lot of good kids. Believe me, the kids in public school are good kids. Um, there's probably 1% that make it bad for the other 99%. But most of the kids in public school are good kids. But going to Sacred Heart, these kids are smart. Um, and they're not all rich. Many of them. Parents have money, might be lawyers, doctors, or whatever. But they're all not. You know, a couple of the parents that I talked to, guys work two jobs and all this stuff to send their kids there. And, um, you know, I'm still in communication with several girls from there um, who, you know, played basketball or uh, softball or something like that at, at Sacred Heart. So um, I, I had a great run as an educator. I my wife always said to me, she goes, every place you go, you know somebody. <laughs> well, you got kids that come from 44 different school districts. I guess you're going to know somebody, aren't you? You are. I, I got to ask you something. There, there's been talk that uh, schools like Tonawanda and other ones that have Indian references and, and uh, Native American references as their uh, mascots, they're going to have to maybe change that. What's your opinion about Tonawanda possibly losing the Warriors has its nickname. It's, it's a bunch of baloney. Personally, I just think it's somebody who wants to complain about something, so we complain about that. It, it's it's an honor. It really is an honor. Actually, Tanawanda did change because, like when I played, we were the Tanawanda High School Red Warriors. It was. They're no longer called Red. You know, they're just called Warriors. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know. Look at it as an honor, not as a you know degradation. Let me ask you. you let me ask you this, Larry. Um, we've talked about a lot of different things in this conversation. What would you like to talk about that I haven't brought up? Some of the guys I played with, uh, you know, uh, like Tommy Small, Tom McKay, Rick. You know, and all, I think of things that um, we did together and all that stuff. Uh, you know, it was just. It was just a great time. They were just great guys, you know. And back when I grew up, you could walk around the city of Tanawanda and not worry about somebody, you know, shooting or, you know, picking you up or whatever. You know, you could walk from place to place and all that stuff. It, it was uh, it was a good time. And, you know, I was fortunate. I played during Tanawanda's era of greatness from about 1954, 55 until maybe 1967. You know, the teens in there were just great. Uh, all the different teams, whatever they were. Uh, they were good athletes, you know, and at that time, and other schools had good athletes too. Don't, you know, think it was only Tonawanda because uh, other schools had good athletes and, and all this stuff. So, um, uh, you know, it, it was a good time. Guys who grew up during my era were lucky. You could walk around. You could walk in Tanawana, North Tanawana, Kenmore, and not worry about 
getting jumped or, you know, somebody's going to pick you up or try and pick you up or whatever. If somebody's going to pick you up, it was your parents. Right. Um, it, it was a, a good time that, that uh, you know, and then later on, after, you know, I got out of high school and moved back to college and then moved out to playing uh, different levels of baseball and softball, I got to know a lot more people that were in a lot more cities. You know, and they're good people, you know. I mean, make it each other about different places, but hey, most of the places, guys I played with are guys like me, you know. Our parents weren't billionaires or anything like this. You know, they were just good down to earth people who were good athletes. Terrific. Uh, Larry Majerus, this has been a lot of fun. I, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we got that Zoom thing working. Uh, hopefully, this is going to process well. I want to thank you again. Wish you well. Good health to you. A continued success. And thanks so much for joining me. No problem, man. I enjoyed it. Thank you.